So, you know, as important as like Afghanistan and Russiagate is, I really think that probably the the most important story that will come out of this whole week, even over the debate, is the fact that Tr- Donald Trump has now announced that he has coronavirus. Uh, this happened just uh, probably like three or four hours before we're recording here, Will. So as far as all the details go, I- I'm sure stuff will come out. But from my understanding, it was White House advisor Hope Hitz that first tested positive prompting both Donald Trump and Melania Trump to get tested, and they have now both tested positive. Uh, other than that, I, I, as far as I know, there's no like official details as far as did they test Trump once, twice, three times to make sure that this wasn't uh, a false positive or somehow a mistake. And at least at this point, my understanding is that Trump is saying that he's going to start quarantining and uh, that he is not showing any symptoms. He has just tested positive. So, Will, are there any details of this that I'm missing? Any, anything that's come out in the May past hour that I didn't catch? No, I think you like this is such a new breaking story that like it is there's not that many details out right now. We just we do know that the the president and the first lady have contracted the virus, um, and yes, likely got it from the White House advisor Hope Hicks, uh, who a couple hours prior she it was uh, it was first it came out in all these reports, and then Trump himself actually came out in a Fox News interview like you know all like as those reports were coming out and confirmed it and said yes like I've I've now learned that she has contracted it and that we you know my wife and I have been tested. And then within a couple hours after that, we then got the news from Trump himself, I think. I think he was the first to announce it through his Twitter handle that, indeed, he had tested positive. And I guess I presume that they probably tested him more than once and, you know, like maybe just did a couple samples all at once to before he came out and announced it. But I have no, you know, I don't have any proof for that at all. Like it could very well be that, you know, he took one test. So um, there's not a whole lot of details out. I think the White House may have put out like the White House physician or something is like the president's in good hands or something like, you know, some boilerplate stuff. But in terms of actual like substantial details, there's not that much out yet. Right. So let's, uh, you know, talk about this a little bit just because it, what could happen here? Uh, obviously, the president's an elderly man, and uh, as you know, as well as his competitor, I feel like that's something that we definitely talked about in foreign policy focus. Just that, while uh, a lot of the death rates for this thing, like especially for children or people under the age of fifty, are really, really low, like well under you know point zero zero one percent and stuff like that. I think for kids it's like point zero 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 five or some ridiculously low, low number, but for you know some of these people who are in advanced stage and you know uh, Donald Trump, I I don't think anybody would say is a shiny model of, of physical health. I, I mean he certainly looks uh, fairly overweight uh, from what people have reported, and I haven't seen a whole lot. You know even his supporters really dispute that the guy likes fast food. Uh, he eats a lot of beef and stuff like that, and so you know not necessarily that. That means he's going to drop dead of coronavirus or anything, but it's not like, you know, a 50, uh, you know, an 18 year old foot high school athlete football player contracting this thing where you're pretty much guaranteed that he's, you know, at worst going to be sick for a couple of weeks and then be absolutely OK. And so, so, Will, what what do you think? Uh, are you concerned at all? Uh, I don't know. Concerned is the right word, but what are your thoughts on the you know potential impacts on the president's health? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a very real possibility. Um, I think as of now, he is sort of asymptomatic. I mean, we've seen him in public, you know, today. Like, he doesn't seem to be, uh, you know, uh, debilitatingly sick or anything. Um, so as as of now, it doesn't seem like he's too uh, affected by this. But we do know that, yeah, like, you know, elderly populations are way more uh, vulnerable to this. I tend to think that some of the COVID stuff has been a little overblown. But like, if anything, that's something that has not been exaggerated, I think, is the threat that this poses to the elderly. That if anyone that is sh- who, you know, should be protected here, they are the most vulnerable. And so Trump is in, definitely in that, uh, you know, population. Um, he's not the first head of state to to test positive for the virus, and we've you know we've seen uh, 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 Boris Johnson in the UK. I think he ended up in like intensive care. Uh, he's he's now recovered. Uh, Herr Bolsonaro in in Brazil, who I think most of the time he just kind of mocked it and said like I'm fine. This is you know I think he did remain completely asymptomatic, and so it could go in many different ways. I mean we could see that you know we could end up having Trump campaigning for president from an intensive care unit. Or we could have him just simply, uh, you know, this doesn't affect him very much. But I do think, nonetheless, this will affect the campaign. You know, like, I think even even if he has zero symptoms, I think he will still have to, even just for the sake of, like, the optics, uh, to not get shredded by the media to, you know, kind of quarantine and stay in. If he has the virus and he's out there personally spreading it around, like, they've already blamed him for killing all these people with the virus. But if he's doing that, I think that'll take it to a, an, another level, you know? Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with you that this is going to change up. 
Trump's plans at least until mid October, if not later. Uh, you know, again, depending if he doesn't show symptoms, I guess I, I would suppose that at least 10 days, uh, you know, October 12th, 13th would be the quickest he would be able to get back out and start doing rallies. Uh, but my guess is two weeks would be the, the number they're probably looking at. So closer to October 15th, uh, that'll certainly make a bigger difference for Trump than it would have Biden. You know, Trump, I, I think, is actually out there campaigning and having uh, some success at, whereas Joe Biden, this would just be another excuse to, you know, hide in the basement. Now, we don't know the details yet as far as when it's possible that Hope Hits got sick. So we have no idea when it's possible that Trump and Melania got this. However, it, you know, we are just two or three days out from this debate here, Will, which means that Donald Trump potentially had coronavirus while he was in the same room as Joe Biden. And, um, you know, I, I thought this presented something that we, we should really start considering as Americans. And that is, do we want the entire leadership of our country to be really, really old people? We saw this with, you know, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, where, you know, for the less ha left half of America, there are a lot of people who believe that, like, as a woman, they're no longer going to be able to, like, get a credit card because Ruth Gator Gary Ginsburg is dead. Like, do don't you think that's, like, a problem for our society if we're so reliant on old people, especially in the midst of a pandemic that's, like, really only serious for old people? Uh there are several justices on the Supreme Court that are well into the, you know, risk age for this. Uh, you know, Clarence Thomas, Stephen Breyer are, are both old. And, you know, Clarence Thomas, again, doesn't seem to be the model of health or anything like that. Uh, you know, senators and rep Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, as old as could be. Uh, you know, Jerry Nadler, again, super old. Uh, Chuck Schumer, Mitch McConnell. All these people are extremely elderly. They have been in, for the most, minus Trump, uh, pretty much everybody I mentioned has been in government for decades, if not has made their entire uh, professional career out of, you know, politics and being in government. It, it seems like this should be a real wake up call for Americans that we have to, like, really adjust how we uh, just let people stay in government until they die. It's it's gonna could throw a, a lot of chaos and, and a lot of floods if you know you had three or four members of the supreme court get this or something or even both presidential candidates i mean what would this do to the potential election if both trump and biden had this and who it both had serious you know reactions to it, it seems uh, like again both of these people would be in the group of, of people you would be increased you know increasingly concerned about uh, getting this and having some serious health repercussions from it. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. I mean, like, I think the, I forget what the average age of both chambers of uh, Congress are. I think it's like in the 60s. I think it, the, the average age puts the people in like the vulnerable, you know, category. And so, yeah, that is kind of dangerous that we have this pandemic going around and conceivably it could incapacitate like a bunch of our, you know, like most, uh, you know, I wish they weren't such important institutions. I wish they didn't have so much power, but like these institutions with a lot of power over society, we are, you know, risking them becoming incapacitated, um, which I don't know. I guess when I put it that way, it doesn't sound so bad, but <laughs> you're right. But no, yeah, there's like the jokes about Rand Paul when he tested positive after being in the Senate that, you know, that could have been the most libertarian act in American history. <laughs> and I mean, look, had, had those people not been able to vote post Rand Paul getting sick and they all had a quarantine? How many trillions of dollars would it have saved the American people? I mean, you know, now being able to look bad six months at that first round of COVID bailout, does anybody not think that the winners aren't like these mega corporations like Boeing or Amazon and that it's just not the rich that have gotten richer off of the whole thing? I mean, are any average Americans really benefiting other than the $1,200 they got for the tens of thousands of dollars of debt wrapped up in their names over this thing? Uh, you know, government being shut down or being brought to a screeching halt probably won't be the worst thing. I, I mean, I guess I, I don't want to see like math, mass death come out of these people. I'd rather, you know, them be prosecuted and most of them thrown in jail for the war crimes and stuff they've supported over the years. But I, I'm not necessarily for them all just dying miserably of COVID. But at, at the same time, <laughs> I generous. do think it's a it, it's something that it, the American people, if they really do, you know, believe that they need a functioning government and everything to really start thinking about. Do you want super, super old people constantly running everything? 
And from my perspective, of course, I think the bigger problem is just the amount of corruption that gets wrapped up by somebody being in government for four decades or so, like, you know, Joe Biden, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer. You know, you just build power and power and power. Um, <laughs> Somebody asked me why they why they thought uh, Ruth Gator Bader Ginsburg didn't retire in like 2015 or something like that, when she would have obviously been replaced by the oh, an Obama justice. I posted the meme of uh, Chancellor Palpatine after he's, uh, you know, gotten hit by Mace Windu and then, uh, you know, Anakin kills him. He goes, absolute power. You know, that, that I think that's really it for these people, that they just can't let go of the power and the influence that they have until the, you know, the day they drop dead. I mean, look at John McCain. Even when he had brain cancer, he was, you know, spending pretty much all of his energy trying to you know, fight what he saw the battle Trump there and, you know, hold on to all the power and influence that he could. Uh, John Lewis was, was in the house for decades on decades on decades until he died. Uh, right. I, I think, you know, Elijah Cummings, I think he retired before he died, but he was like blind and, you know, his, his the, the prime years of his life are well, well past him. And, and look, you know, me and you will be in, uh, we're, we're both younger men here and there's, I, I think millennials are now close to, if not the largest voting group. And not that I think we could change the world by voting or anything, but just to reflect of, you know, what the American population looks like, it looks nothing like our government. And, and you know, if you talk to a millennial, there's a huge cultural difference between us and the boomers, uh, you know, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. We're not like those people a whole lot. You know, yeah. and uh, and, it, you know, people wonder why it doesn't seem like the government reflects, you know, the, you know, kind of the soul of the American people. Well, it's because they're from two generations and don't reflect the American population anymore. So, you know, those are just kind of all all things that have came to mind. Uh, the, the last, I think, thing I just thought about that we'll get details on we don't know yet but it's going to be really important and a big topic of conversation which is future debates between Trump and uh Biden i think this coming week the is a vice presidential debate as far as i've heard Mike Pence isn't involved in any of this i don't think he was with Donald Trump at the most recent debate uh from all the pictures i saw i think only Trump's family was there so I don't know if there's a reason to think that Mike Pence uh, may have contracted coronavirus or not or could possibly be positive. So I don't know if it'll defend, affect the vice presidential debate or if anybody even cares about the vice presidential debate at this point. However, I, it seems likely to me that this will in some way change what a future debate between Trump and Biden looks like, if not just cancels them. Uh, as it, it doesn't seem like it would even be possible to have one of those debates before mid-October. Yeah, I mean, there already was talk. In fact, Wolf Blitzer, like five seconds after the first debate ended, said, like, put cast doubt on that there would be, even be another debate. You know, I'm not so sure there will be another one of these. And so, like, that was immediately after, the, you know, well before Trump contracted COVID. And now with that, I think it will be a very easy excuse for them to just call these things off. Especially after what a you know I don't know how well the ratings did. Maybe that will you know encourage people some people to put it back on. But I don't know. I think after that first one, they might not might not re, you know do it again. Yeah. Uh, just my my last thought on this that I had that I thought was somewhat important is just we haven't really seen what the reaction to this is because it broke pretty late Thursday night. I say like ten eleven o'clock. Trump sent out the tweet right. And I think it was like so, midnight even, okay. Friday morning, yeah. Yeah, so pretty late. Uh, I'm on Central Time now, that's why. Uh, yeah, oh, right, so right, right. That, uh, that's, you know, pretty late. So, you know, we'll see what comes. But I think people are really going to try to rub it in and be like, ha, ah, look how stupid Trump is. He got coronavirus. I really don't think that's a big deal, that Trump got coronavirus. I don't know if it'll affect the outcome of the election unless Trump develops symptoms and is, uh, you know, unable to make any public appearances and is sick for longer or has to quarantine for longer than two weeks. I think that would become an issue for him. But if he's asymptomatic for two weeks after testing positive, I think that actually may be a, a little bit of a boon to him to be like, look, I've now battled this thing. I've had it. I've experienced it. I survived it. And so he has a little bit of antidotal, maybe uh, a yeah. political capital with that. And so, and especially if like Joe Biden also has it and then shows symptoms. 
But I, I think this could really end up throwing the, the you know, political or in the election into a, a major shift or turn, depending, again, on when Trump is recovered and if Biden was impacted by this. Uh, but right. I, I'm guessing, Will, this, this is going to be one of those stories that we'll be talking about uh, again and again over the next couple of weeks as we are now a month and a day out from uh, this election. Anything else right. on that, Will? No, I mean, I think you, you pretty much hit it. I think this has a very big potential to be huge or it could be, you know, have very little effect. You know, I think it'll depend a lot on whether the president shows symptoms and how much this actually affects his health.